I'm a civil and environmental engineer with a background in water operations. And today I will talk about how we need to improve the health of our rivers and streams. They're under pressure from urbanization and more intense rainfall events. So we do have the tools today, the digital tools that can help, and they're hydraulic models. And today I'll show you how we can use them to help improve water water quality and prevent pollution from happening. Um, I've changed the title slightly. It was river basins, and I'm making it catchment instead, which is a smaller area, and that's to align with some of the changes that are coming through in the Urban Wastewater Treatment Directive. Okay, here's the agenda. Ooh, there you go. I'll tell you what a CSO is, and then I'll talk about what happened in the UK and how it went wrong. And then I'll explain a little bit about what's happening with the regulation, and then finally show you how our digital tools can help you prevent pollution. But first, let me tell you who we are and what we do. Oop, sorry. OK. Just over two years ago, Autodesk completed the acquisition of Innovise. Innovise has over 35 years of experience in hydraulic modeling software. We're civil engineers and water asset management professionals. We have over 6,500 customers in over 60 countries, and they include water utilities, government organizations, engineering, construction, and consulting firms. And bringing Innovise into the Autodesk product portfolio demonstrates its commitment to water is critical to civil infrastructure. OK, first, what do we do? We provide engineers with software solutions that help manage the water cycle from impounding reservoirs and flood defenses all the way through to drinking water distribution, um, wastewater collection, treatment, and the discharge back into the environment. Our goal is to make water management sustainable, efficient, and safe for people and the environment. So this effectively expands Autodesk's BIM strategy into water, covering the plan, design, build, and operations phases of a product, product, project life cycle. So our main solutions are physics-based hydraulic models, and that's what I'll be going to be talking about today. Models that replicate the physical assets and allow you to run scenarios to test what might happen to them under different conditions. So first, what's a CSO? Well, they often go by other names. It's a combined sewer overflow in this case, but it could be a storm sewer overflow or a sanitary sewer overflow. But the clue is in the word sewer and overflow, and you never want to hear those two things together because that means pollution. OK. OK, years ago, when we first designed wastewater systems, engineers were efficient, and they thought they could use the same pipe work for both stormwater drainage and the sewer network. These are combined pipes that take all wastewater away from the home into the treatment works. On the left, the system's working correctly, and you can see that it just drains away. And the pipes were sized for this sort of um, arrangement. But with changing conditions, like more population growth, urbanization, and the increasing intensity of storms, we're finding more situations on the right. Here, the, the system is overloaded, and you can see that something has to happen or it will back up into the house. So this is the reason why CSOs exist. They will release a combination of raw sewage and storm water out through the combined sewer overflow. This is what they look like, and this situation is no longer acceptable. Some of their impacts are fish kills due to oxygen depletion, eutrophication. It contains, wastewater contains nitrogen, phosphorus. These are ingredients in fertilizer. It, it makes algae grow. And of course, there's the health risk to swimmers. Um, it contains pathogens. Commonly, you'll hear about people getting ear infections or gastroenteritis after swimming. So, my message today is that it's important to improve how we design and manage our wastewater infrastructure now, before it becomes a problem like in the UK where, where I live. For the past three years, sewage spills have been in the media spotlight <clears throat> with news headlines like these. You don't want to see these. And the latest cost estimate to reduce sewage pollution 
is 56 billion pounds. Customers are angry. OK, so the answer from the Environment Agency is that all CSOs now need to be monitored with event duration monitors. These are sensors that will tell you when a spill is occurring. There are over 20,000 of them in the UK, and they're being rolled out now and should be completed by the end of 2023. And there's the obligation to report this information to the public. It's citizen science at work. And what I have over here is an example fr from the Rivers Trust. It's a charitable organization concerned with the health of the rivers. And here they've used Esri to sort of plot how many CSOs are in each area. And if you go online, you can drill down and see each individual CSO, perhaps the one near you, and how often it has spilled pollution to the environment. What they found out is from this data is that during last year, there were an average of 825 spills per day for a total of 1.75 million hours. And that's a reduction from the previous year. So that's going in the right direction. Um, but this, is, this is, tells us, the EDMs tell us a point in time when a spill is happening. What they don't really tell you is why or what you can do to prevent it. And this is where using a model comes in. The hydraulic model will tell you what is happening in the system upstream from this. And this is why it's important to have that. This is just a snapshot in time. It's spilled. How do you prevent it? OK, before I go into that, let's talk about what's happening here in the EU, because they're very aware of what's happened in the UK. And the Urban Wastewater Treatment Directive, for the first time in 30 years, is being updated. Last week, the European Par Parliament voted through the first update. Um, this was a landmark piece of legislation when it first came out in 1991, and it created a step change in water quality. And its goal was to make sure that wastewater was treated to a high standard so it didn't impact the environment. But there's still a little bit of residual pollution there left. And a lot of it comes from urban runoff um, and CSOs. So there's some work we need to do to, to address that. They're taking more of a preventative approach. And what they're proposing is something called an integrated urban wastewater management plan. And what that is, is taking together all of the aspects of, of, a, of a catchment in a holistic view, and that is considering wastewater collection, drainage, stormwater, and then looking at the impact of storms and how it impacts your rivers and streams, um, particularly if it's coming from a combined system where there's a higher risk of a spill. Um, it's going to come into effect for any place with more than 100,000 people. So that's quite a lot of areas. Um, and it also has a, another um, regulation to look at sensitive environmental areas with more than 10,000 people. So you'll have to assess the impact of storms. You'll also have to set some targets for reducing pollution from CSOs and stormwater overflows. And then you have to plan how you're going to achieve those targets. And one of the things that they want to see is more nature-based solutions and digitalization. So it'll be a combination of hydraulic models to prevent the spills from happening in the first place, along with thinking about things such as handling urban runoff using infrastructure such as suds. And here's some pictures over here on the left. We have a swale, some planting, and then a, a road median rain garden. And this is sort of the concept that they have here in Berlin with Sponge City, where they're trying to take 30% of the rainwater and divert it away from the piped network. So let's talk about hydraulic models, because that's what I'm here for. Water companies have been using them for years. They are not new. And we use them to understand how networks respond to changes. And the change can be not just a change in weather, a storm, but it also can be operational control change, or you're adding more properties and expanding your network. These, these networks are always changing. There's a lot of variables that need to be considered besides rainfall. And our product is actually called ICM, Integrated Catchment Model. 
go? OK, just a little bit more. Um, what is it? It's a digital, represent digital representation of your real world system, its elements and its behavior. And why do we need this? Well, most of your assets and your network are out of sight. You can't see them. They're below ground. So it makes it difficult to manage if they're hard to observe. So models are preventative. They can help you identify the pollution risks. And, and you can run a variety of storms to see how they'll respond. Um, oh, sorry. I want to go backwards. Um, and then you can test different scenarios to mitigate the impacts of pollution. Um, you can also have a look at how you would invest in your network, uh, where it makes sense to um, um, address population growth by expanding it, uh, or look at it in the context of a changing climate. And then the final thing you can do is once you have a model that you trust, you can add in real-time data, such as weather forecasts, um, any data from your sensors in your network, connect it up to SCADA systems and control systems, and turn it into a digital twin that gives you situational awareness and give it to your operations team for operational control so that they can take preventative measures before pollution actually occurs. OK, so let's do an example here. This is an example of ICM just running. Uh, one of my colleagues put this together, and he's using it on a GPU card, but we could actually run the simulations in the cloud. Um, and what you see at the top is just sort of the layout of your urban environment with the network and the manholes. And the cross-session cross cutaway here is the pipe network. And what you can see is the pipes are becoming surcharged, they're filling up, and they're going to become surcharged. That means they're approaching hydraulic overload. And when it goes from orange to red, that actually indicates you have a spill. So you can see the spill location on the, on the map as well. And then you can see it actually here in the cross section too. And over on the graph, it's showing you the rainfall and how it's responding. So the software is good to assess um, where you might need to make some, some changes to your network, where you have risk, and also where you could plan your interventions in. And it doesn't necessarily have to be additional storage tanks or more pipes. It can be SUDS in this case, and you can test that later. You could put in some SUDS features, rerun it, and see how it, the whole model would change. OK, this is 2D, and there's been a lot of 3D here today, so I'll give you a similar view in 3D. OK, this is using the same, same, sort of, same sort of thing, but it's a different visu visualization. It's in InfraWorks to demonstrate how it fits in with ICM. And here he's importing some of the information. And the next thing you do is you add in your ArcGIS layers to add real world context to it, pipelines. And there you can see, you can zoom in on where your problem is. You can go underground, have a look at your pipes. Those are your problem pipes. These are your problem manholes. These are areas you need to be concerned with. And then you can actually see, and he ran a 1 in 100 year flood here. So that's quite a significant event. You can see where it's flooding. And you can see which manholes were problematic. Um, so there's a lot that you can do with a, high, high, uh, with a model. And this one was about storm impact on wastewater and drainage networks. And I hope it makes you think about how you will prepare for changes in the wastewater directive that's coming up. Um, but I also want you to think about the impact of storms on other infrastructure as well, because it's not just wastewater and drainage. Um, the concept of climate adaptation applies to all civil infrastructure, road, rail, electric electrical systems. It's a risk that we need to be aware of and plan for. So please stop by our booth if you have any questions at the front near the entrance. And um, we'll be happy to talk to you about getting your model built and how to start or how to turn it into a digital twin if you're already there. Um, we have uh, over 30 years of digital twin experience. And we're happy to work with you and look forward to helping you with your pollution challenges or flood challenges. Thank you. <laughs>